Let's get physical, it's Jordan here back again with this week's update and all the physical releases coming to the Switch. We're in the second week of 2021, January 11th until the 15th, retail, low print and imports, plus our community spotlight where you show off your pickups and potentially win a Switch game. Let's get on with it. Five Nights at Freddy's core collection is due for January 12th, this is priced around $40 and with it you get Five Nights at Freddy's 1 to 4 plus Sister Location, that's a decent 5 games in 1. These are all horror games, all about management, keeping on top of things, and learning patterns. They play rather similarly from what I'm being told, but if you're a fan of the games, then I suppose this is a fine little package. You can buy the games individually on the eShop, but together on one cartridge sounds like a decent deal to me. I have to say I'm half interested in it myself. Remember guys, don't get this one confused with the physical that released last month called Help Wanted. That is a different release. Looks like we're getting all the five nights at once here. Let's jump into the low prints. Hot off the press, we have Sense, a cyberpunk ghost story. This is being put up for pre-order from PlayAsia as part of their exclusive lineup between themselves and East Asia Soft. I have to admit, I pretty much knew that this was going to get a physical release via PlayAsia at some point, but I'm surprised it happened so soon. I guess this is a partial import, half low print, as the collector's edition is limited. I'm not sure of the quantity at the time of making this, but it's probably around 2000 that's what they usually go for. The standard edition is open pre-order. Anyways, if you're not familiar with this then, you probably missed my review last Thursday. This is an adventure style game, a bit old school in its nature. It has horror and cyberpunk themes, but it is very much a slow paced puzzle adventure game. I enjoyed it quite a lot, although I may like it more than others. There were a few visual issues with the release, but I'm told the physical will have the fixed version. The collector's edition, you're going to get a soundtrack CD with it and a nice little certificate. If you want to get your hands on this, I definitely am, then down below in the description and the pinned comment, I've put links as to where you can order this on Thursday, 11pm Hong Kong time, which is 3pm in the UK, 10am New York, and 7am California. If you use those links, then it helps support us absolutely massively. People who use them really have helped this series more than you can possibly know. So yeah, if you can come back on Thursday and click our link to order, it would be massively appreciated. And in return, if you use our links, you can get a very nice 5% off this order if you use the coupon Switch Watch TV while checking out. That's all one word, Switch Watch TV while checking out for 5% off your order. And thank you ever so much for your support. I'm definitely picking this one up. Some big announcements coming out of Limited Run this week. The biggest has to be that of Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the game thought lost to the digital age. This game was almost a meme for Limited Run, and although it's not quite as big as if they'd done the like the PS3 version, which, you know, where it's truly gone forever, they have the Switch and PS4 versions, and I bet they had to pay a pretty penny for this one. I don't think they'd have lived with the shame of not bagging it. And so, as you can imagine, they're milking this mother dry. Oh my god. From January 15th, you can pre-order a standard version for $35. It has a reversible cover. There's a classic version, which can be gotten for $55. $5, which includes a special box, sticker sheet, soundtrack CD, commemorative concert ticket, and a world map. You can even splash out $140 for the KO edition featuring a pop-up box kind of thing that has like working lights and music. It looks kind of cool, a bit unusual. Uh, it has a game guide, a cassette of the soundtrack, drumsticks, guitar plectrums, enamel pin, trading cards, plus all the things in the classic edition too. That's big. That's expensive, but that's not all. They've got merchandise coming out of the proverbial t-shirts, sweaters, switch cases, enamel pins, even more enamel pins, key rings, trading cards, they've got them all. Every Scott Pilgrim thing you could wish to, you know, splash your cash on. January 15th for this one, and unsurprisingly, Santa Tartaruga, Boombox, Jonathan Rumor, Ganicus, God of Resin, and Alolan Jojos have chosen this as their pick of the week. Almost as an afterthought this week, Limited Run have a distribution title in Shirin the Wanderer. This has been known about for quite a while, but finally they are putting it up for pre-order on January 12th. You can get the standard version for $35 or a collector's edition for $75, which includes an art book, stress ball, dice, and three art prints. Very similar to the Japanese standard edition, uh, but with a bit of extra stuff. So yeah, this has been out in Japan for over a month now. It has English on the cartridge, uh, and the standard version 
version on Play Asia at the time of writing is $47, comes with the art book. So it's a nice alternative, a bit of like kind of in between. As I said, you can pre order this from a limited run on the 12th and wait for that to come or import the Japanese version, which is, you know, kind of middle ground between limited run editions.、Uh, and this is Dane Wilkinson's and Alexander Kato's Pick of the Week. That's not all. Limited Run also,、uh, last week they announced、uh, they had a distribution effort for the collector's edition of the upcoming Harvest Moon One World. While Limited Run aren't shy about going for a bit of dross now and again, I'm surprised they've gone for the much tainted Harvest Moon name. Remember, guys, this is not the series we all knew and loved. This is just a name plastered on a cheaply made copy. Story of Seasons is where the Harvest Moon real, the, the real games are. They are the good games, not Harvest Moon. Uh, anyways, this collector's edition priced at $100 has a chicken plushie as well as a magnetic musical diorama set.、Uh, this game is due for release in early March. Not sure if the collector's edition will be ready in time for that. You can pre order this now. Now, there are no imports this week apart from Sense, which is kind of an in between. So let's just jump into the community spotlight, the Let's Get Physical community spotlight. Remember, if you are showed in this series, then at the end of the month, you'll be in with the chance of winning a physical Switch game. And this month's is Dead or School, a European and Japanese exclusive. A bit of a rough gem. I quite like it, even though it is like, you know, a bit, a bit rough. <clears throat> Starting with me,、uh, our discount code for Red Art Games is ending on Tuesday, so maybe by, by the time you're watching this, it's, it's ended already.、Uh, I know some of you said it hasn't been working sometimes, but you know, when they have their own kind of sale, ours is disabled, so you can't get double the savings. That's kind of sad, but understandable.、Uh, anyways, it should be working for the last day, I'd hope, until Tuesday. You can get a nice 10% off anything from Red Art Games' website, pre orders, collector's editions, music, Vita Games anything with S Watch 10.、Uh, the last game I'm showing off of theirs for quite a while is going to be a real nice double pack of games Demetrius and Xenon Valkyrie Profile. No, not Xenon. What am I talking about, Xenon? <laughs> I wish it was. It's actually Xenon Valkyrie Plus. Uh, I mean, these two games couldn't be any different in terms of what they have to offer, but they are from the same publisher, Cow Cat. Demetrius is a point and click adventure style game, which is a genre that I really love if done well, and it looks as though that they've nailed this one.、Uh, a nice comic mystery with classic gameplay. I haven't played it myself, but I am definitely looking forward to giving it a try. Xenon Valkyrie Plus, not profile,、uh, reminds me, at least in terms of art style, of Riddled Corpses EX, which is another Red Arts game,、uh, but this one is an action platformer with RPG elements, which I think we were. Reviewed back in the day. It's pretty hardcore and it's a pretty good game. I, I really like the art style to it. And you know, action, roguelike, yeah, it's pretty good. And together, it makes a nice double package. As with all Red Art games, they come in a card sleeve and, and once again, the cover art is the same as the card art, which is a pity, but you know, it's one of their early titles and it has some very nice interior art as well. So yeah, you can order this from Red Art Games' website and use our discount code. And yeah, thank you for Red Art Games for providing this hope that we can sort something out again in the future. But for now, that is the end of our promotion. All right, on to you. Now, reading back from the survey is pretty unanimous in terms of how to tweak this series and improve it. I think it was almost universal in that you guys love the Communist Spotlight. But it probably goes on a little bit too long. So I'm gonna have to tighten the ship a little. I'm going to limit the amount of photos talked about. I'm gonna try 30 people this week and see how it goes. And then the rest of you will have a nice little montage at the end. People also suggested that I be more selective on pictures, like choose the most interesting ones, which I have decided to completely ignore. You know, I see where you're coming from, but I don't want to turn this into a competition. You know, I, I'm not one for willy waving. I believe if you pick up a random copy of, like, I don't know, Mario and Rabbids, you should have equal chance of someone who's, you know, bought 40 brand new games. It's not a competition, guys. So, so I'm going to choose people、uh, completely at random with a slight priority system. Firstly,、uh, our YouTube members, we only have 14 of them, most of whom don't show off regularly. So,、uh, yeah, I thought I'd give them priority just for thanks for their support. Secondly, people who use our Play Asia affiliates, mainly because、uh, I want to make sure that I say thank you publicly to you. And when you do send in your pictures, just make sure you tell me that you used our affiliates if you did. Sometimes people show Play Asia goodies, but I don't know if they've used our links or not.、So、never sure. Then, thirdly, people who haven't been featured in the current month. So if you didn't feature last week, then you have a higher chance of being shown this week. Or if you've never submitted a picture before, I'll give you a little bit of priority. And then the rest of you, completely. Chosen at random, like completely at random. I won't even look at the pictures to get biased by all the delicious fight crabs. You can't bribe me with pictures of fight crab. Okay, 
With that in mind, executive producer Alolan Jojo finally got his hands on Death Squared from One Print Games' website. This is the like the full edition, but you can get it from Play Asia just without the keychain and the manual. It's a nice game, good puzzle party game. Art Phoenix Assorted showed off the pickups from December. What a haul it is. Lots of low print stuff like Panzer Dragoon, Sisters Royale, Power Rumi from Play Asia. Great stuff. I think my Power Rumi arrived in the UK recently. And I'm not sure. I need to ask my mom. Brandon got in these games. Looks like they've imported Morbid from Europe. Again, I am baffled as to why this did not get a North American release from Merge Games when they've been happy to dump, you know, some shovelware over there. What's going on, Merge? Come on. Captain Slow picked up these games Splasher from Red Art Games and they got in Grandia from Limited Run, the first game variant cover. That's the one that I'm hoping for. Chris Stade got in these two, Grandia again, but this time the second game's cover variant, plus Puyo Puyo Tetris 2, where it sadly seems to have come and gone, really without much fanfare. Hopefully, like the first game, it can be a bit of a sleep hit though, because I'm sure it's fantastic. Crow was one to pick up the North American variant of Wallachia. It's just beautiful. I definitely need to get my hands on that one. It might be one of my favorite covers on the Switch for sure. As you can see, they got it from VGNY's website, which is exclusive to them. Dark X showed off two Aura games hiding in this picture. Can you, can you see them? Can you find them? Uh, alongside some beastly arcade dance games. I mean, guys, look, as long as you've got the space for two dance machines, all the power to you, you know. I really need to get me some Jambo Safari, but first, I need to buy a proper house. Eduardo showed off some fantastic pickups. That's some super interesting cover art for that Hyrule Warriors. It's two, it has two logos on it. My brain is struggling to comprehend why. I mean, it's a Spanish release, so, you know, just have a Spanish, man. I'm, I'm sure people aren't going to be that confused. Um, I hope there's not, like, an official Swiss version, because they need about four logos on that bad boy. El Spagato wanted to show off the beautiful art book for Gris. Uh, I don't know if I'm getting the right sense of scale, but that looks like an absolute beast. If ever a game deserved an art book, it has to be Gris. Extra Mad showed off the two Grandia covers together. You know, one of the things that I don't like about Limited Run too much amongst the, you know, the many small things is the fact that they goad you to buy a game twice by guaranteeing that you'll receive one of each cover variant. That, I don't really like it. <clears throat> Executive producer Gannicus got in these uh, Ease Origins, one of the North American covers, plus the gorgeous Ori Collector's Edition from I Am 8-Bit, the website. Executive producer God of Resin got in these recent pickups, a real mix of games, uh, Transformers to Xenoblade. I mean, I love the variety there. Griffin picked up these from Play Asia during a recent sale. Those three volumes were the original releases of the Psycho Shooters in Korea. Four games in each. Uh, for the Japanese release and the Western release, they squashed them into just two volumes. But I really like the cover art here. Plus, I think each volume has massive variety. They, they really spread them well. Oh, and Final Fantasy IX, baby. Guru also got in Final Fantasy Glory, uh, side by side with the PS1 US release. I always find it a bit weird seeing old school FF artwork for North America. For me, uh, the European and Japanese artwork is, is kind of inseparable from the games. White background, logo, to me, that is Final Fantasy, not some CGI artwork. What's going on there? Ike wanted to show off some custom manuals for a couple of games. I think these must be from the guy that I featured before. And honestly, I feel bad, but I can't actually like find the dude again. Uh, but if I do find the dude again, I'll put his Etsy store in the description below if you want to get some customized manuals yourself. Or not customized, fan made is probably the better phrase for it. Inactive Yeti, many thanks for using our links and code to pick up uh, a few of these games. Shirin, The Wanderer, the Japanese version. Mr. Driller is an Asian exclusive physical, a great action puzzle game that plays in English. A really nice import for sure. Jens Kolk showed off some games, rather nice obscure games too. Super Chariots, Agalos, Songbird, Symphony, Vostok Inc. I love seeing obscure indie stuff. Jay Frosty got in some fantastic inputs, which Spring 3 is beautiful. Plus, awesome to see Fight of Gods. Hilarious, and I love to see it. Even the box art with Jesus getting properly pissed off with Buddha is beautiful. Jim Wiley, spending lockdown with some excellent games. A few good low print efforts there. Yes, Your Grace from Super Rare. I haven't seen that too much uh, from people in this series. I think it's only been shown a couple of times here. 
Jonathan had a few pictures to show off, but I thought I'd stick with uh, some nice imports, of course. Inertial Drift, currently exclusive to Europe, I believe, as is Waifu Uncovered. <clears throat> Warborn, an interesting physical, rather obscure, I would say, came and went without you know much fanfare. I have to give P Cube a lot of credit. They do take a chance on these smaller indie games at retail. Mikaelson picked up these games. Oh god, I definitely need to pick up Dragon Quest. I've been really having urges to play it more and more. I just wish I had the time for it. I just I just have so much going on in my life right now. Min Q showed off these games, cross code from Strictly Limited. Nice to see that they are finally getting sent out the collector's edition. People have been waiting a long ass time, but that tends to be how it goes with Strictly Limited. OB Bolo showed off some red art goodness. Some of their more recent titles that are starting to be sent out, like uh, Vectronom and Skyfish. Skyfish is probably it's not their greatest release, but it's an interesting premise, and I think I was rather dismissive of it originally. But the more I look at it, the more I kind of want it. Pabs sent in quite a lot of pictures, but I thought I'd go with the Eye Dazzler. Uh, lots of great games in here, and a lot of games that we don't see too often in the series, such as like Ben 10 and Goosebumps. Always fun to see games that aren't seen often, even if they're not uh, like the best in terms of quality. I like seeing new stuff. Pitaik Padavan got in their first import experience. What a fantastic bunch of games to import. The Beautiful Moon, uh, the Japanese Clanad, Little Busters in the middle bottom. All of these games have English and possibly the best Switch import of all time, Okami. Criminal, it never got a Western release, but hey, the Japanese release is there to be imported with English. I highly recommend, if you want to import one game, like just one game, get Okami. It's one of the best games ever made, and you know, it's, it's not that expensive to import. Punky Dooster showed off these games, Space Invaders Forever, three games in one. Uh, I've seen this a couple of times now, I'm just wondering where the Invincible collection is. That was the one from, I think it was Strictly Limited, a long ass time ago. Um, has, that, has that been sent out now? I don't know, it feels like it's been forever. Rain finally got in their shippings from B-Side Games, the low print company in Japan, with their absolutely wonderful packages. They have some gorgeous editions of games. Most of them uh, have English too. Golf Story, beautiful. Kamiko, fantastic. The bottom middle is Brave Dungeon. Uh, these are not cheap. They're not, and they're a pain in the ass to order, but they are lovely. Absolutely stunning. Ron showed off these games, 1971 is a bit of an obscure one, not one you'd expect to see a physical version this day and age, but it's fascinating to see. Pretty cool artwork too. They showed off these games, the signature edition of Morbid, plus something rather obscure in El Dorado Creatures. No idea if it's any good, probably not, but interesting to see nonetheless. But he also got in these games too, again, another legend of the Skyfish from Red Ark Games, plus Cthulhu! I love saying it, Cthulhu! Cthulhu Saves Christmas, which seems uh, fairly quick in terms of being sent out by Limited Run. Executive producer Alexander Kato picked up Nino Kuni and Alcana, a beautiful visual novel game that has the theme of sky, and it's, it's, just, it's just lovely. I really enjoyed that one. All right, let's do a nice little roundup. Adam Karaskilo, Cartoon Soren, Champ Dancer, Etienne, Fluttershout, Kozai Hard, Lars, Michael Vilchevsky, Miguel Torres, Raven Knight, Retro Boy, Robin Hatherall, Shaft Zero, Silverhouse, Spawn Seven, Steven Six Six Five, Streaming on the Corner, The One, Transient Image, Ty Whittle, Visipon, Ying, Yo Daddy, Zero Flux, and Chew It. I like to chew it, chew it. Anybody remember that? And that's it, guys. I always enjoy seeing what you guys pick up or what you have in your collection. Please send me your pictures on Twitter over at so what about game. You can DM me or you can tag me in a post to use the hashtag Let's Get Physical. I'll give you a nice little retweet too. Or you can email into us at contact us at switchwatch.co.uk. Just make sure you start the email title with Community Spotlight so don't miss it. Plus, we have a Discord, which is always a nice way to have a little chat with you guys. And you can submit your pictures there in the submissions section. Discord link is below in the description please group all your games together into one picture and send me one picture please only one picture because that really helps me out talking about it organizing it editing it it just helps so much thank you i'd really appreciate it right guys i hope you enjoyed this episode of new physical special thanks to our executive producers dane wilkinson god of resin boom box brent mclean jonathan rumor ganicus 
Santa Tartaruga, Alolan Jojo, and Alexander Cato, and all the others who joined our memberships. Please check out last week's episode in case you missed it. Many thanks to you watching right now. If you watched all 20 minutes of this episode, you're a legend. High five. Thank you ever so much. The longer you watch, the more YouTube likes us. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.